Welcome to Matt Fitness. Today we're going to work through a 10 minute stretch class. So to begin, let's get started on our backside. Starting in a glute bridge position, I want you to your feet as wide as you can. From here, we're just going to fold the legs to one side. So that left leg coming down to the floor, trying to get it down, hugging that floor, right knee is trying to pin down, and I'm going to feel this awesome stretch through my hips. Once I feel that stretch, I'm going to brace my midsection, and then just switch sides. Everything falls over to the right side. And once I feel that stretch to the lower back and hips, I'm just going to keep shifting to either side with the intention of going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Once you start driving blood flow to that area, things start warming up, you should start gaining mobility and more freedom to move. Good. Now, I'm just going to have you fold right onto your side, legs bent at 90 degrees, arms together, relaxing on your bottom arm, and from here, we're just going to stretch and reach, trying to bring that right hand to the floor and have that right shoulder hug the floor. I'm going to take a nice deep exhale, see if I get more range of motion from my back and spine, keep my core braced, and then crunch right back over. So it's really important here that I use gravity in my body weight to stretch myself, so I really have to focus on keeping these legs down and pinned. So I get as much of a pull or a stretch through this line. Hold that breath, keep that core tight, crunch, and we're gonna do one more time. Really lengthen, focus on that exhale, and just see if you can gain more freedom and more range of motion. After that third rep, we're just gonna switch sides. So onto my right side, bend my legs at 90 degrees, relax my head, arms together, and I'm just going to open up, eyes, hands, feel that stretch, trying to keep those legs down, keep my core brace, bring it back together, and then repeat. Sometimes you might notice actually a difference between your left and right sides, one being uh, tighter, one might be stronger, one might be weaker, less coordinated, whatever it is, and so when we stretch one side at a time, you might, might really feel the tension difference of one side being tighter than the other. Good. Okay. After that position, we're going to then get into what we call the frogger. So really wide knees, really wide toes. We're going to get you as tall as you can and start drawing those hips back. And this is not something that you force. Don't force feed yourself to get more range of motion if you can. Once I get to that point where I feel a good amount of tension through my groin, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to focus on my breath and really focus on that exhale. And with that exhale, I'm trying to really surrender and relax all my tight muscles rather than fight the position. Then, another breath, and just see if I can get deeper and deeper. After that second rep, I'm just gonna draw myself forward, get off tension, see if I can get my knees and my toes a little bit wider, and then draw those hips back down again. See if I can get a little bit more range of motion. And it's important here that I keep my chest tall and big rather than dumping, because then I'm gonna start putting kind of the stretch in different places and not be able to stretch my hips. Get back, feel that tension, another exhale, and sink into it. Now, after the frogger position, we're going to get into kind of like a modified frogger position. So I'm gonna start on the left side of my mat. I'm gonna open up my leg as straight as I can, toe facing forward, opening this knee up as much as I can, and I'm drawing my hips back and down to my left pocket, back pocket. Again, trying to stay tall through my chest, using my arms to really support myself, and draw my hips back to get this awesome stretch through my groin, but also this inner thigh. Deep exhale, sink into that position. I'm gonna relax. Again, sit in, focus on that exhale, try to get a little bit deeper, and relax. Now, the second part is kicking that toe up and hitting more of the inner thigh in that stretch. So same exact strategy, go a little bit wider with your knee if you can. If not, hang out where you are, sit back, get deep into that position, feel that stretch, focus on that exhale, and then if you have to relax, draw your weight forward and then get back into that position. You'll notice that over time, these muscles will start stretching. It's really important that we also take account to, of our central nervous system because sometimes our central nervous system wants to guard and block our ability to go deeper into these positions. 
So one way I like to really focus on that is by drawing my hips back and down, but also pushing my foot into the floor. So I'm actively pushing into the floor. Feel those muscles light up even more, and then relax. And then all of a sudden, I'll be able to gain a little bit more range of motion. That's where the central nervous system comes in. Again, push down with that foot as I draw my hips back and down. Focus on my exhale, and get a little bit more range of motion. Then we're gonna kick that toe up, maybe a little bit wider, draw those hips back and down. Feel that stretch, focus on that breath, and then one more, here we go. Pushing that heel down, really opening up that inner thigh, feeling that stretch, staying tall, exhale, and relax, good. Now, we're gonna get more into a half kneeling position, and we're gonna make sure that we stretch the front half of our body, our hip flexors, because they oftentimes get really, really tight since so many of us sit. So I want you to stay in a very upright position, draw those hips forward, keep everything square, so knees, hips, back, leg, everything as square as you can, keep the shoulders square, shoulder blades back, and I'm gonna squeeze my left butt cheek or my back side to draw the hips forward. Just by squeezing, it's gonna engage this muscle and force this muscle to stretch. Now, once I'm in this position, I'm gonna go as far as I can, I'm gonna keep pinching my rear end, then when I can't go any further, I'm gonna relax, and you're gonna see that I'm gonna start gaining more range of motion. Now I'm gonna squeeze again, squeeze, 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 as hard as I can for about five seconds, and then I'm gonna relax, and really start opening that hip up. Now we're just gonna switch sides. Left leg forward, squaring my legs up, squeezing my right glute, forcing the hips to come forward, feeling a really nice stretch in front of my right hip, relax, and you're going to see and feel the hips shift forward as I gain more range of motion. I'm going to squeeze again, squeeze, 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 and relax, and hopefully get more and more range of motion. Now, right from the stretch, all I'm going to do is extend this leg, kick back my knee, and I'm pretty flexible, so go as far as you feel comfortable. I'm going to keep this leg straight and start hinging my hips back. Now, if you can't palm your hands or bring your forearms down, that's okay. You can stay up tall, you can hold them into the wall or, or onto a foam roller or a chair and start focusing on that hinge. Now, once I back my hip back, as long as I stay tall, I'm gonna really wind up this hamstring and I'm gonna feel an awesome stretch. So make sure once you feel that stretch, you start pushing down almost like you're gonna karate chop or kick the floor. Really start driving that heel down to the floor and enhance that stretch, then relax. And you'll be able to get a little bit deeper. Now for me, over time, I can get even further deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So get that good stretch, drive that heel down, drive it down to the floor, then relax, and just see if you can go a little bit deeper. Good, focus on that exhale, try to surrender those tight muscles so you can get more range of motion. And then we're just gonna kick back and hit that other side. So right leg is forward, left side is back, Again, if you don't have the range of motion or flexibility, stay tall and just hinge the hips back. Get as much of a stretch as you can. Push that heel down to the floor and then relax. Get a little more range of motion, a little more stretch, but again, totally passive. I'm not using my heel right now. And then as I start getting more range, I'm get a little bit deeper into my stretch, square everything up, keep my chest forward, my hips forward. I'm gonna push down with that heel hard Actively pushing, actively pushing, actively pushing, and then I'm gonna relax, and you're gonna see all of a sudden I start gaining some serious range of motion. Now, last but not least, we're gonna focus on really stretching our back and the muscles underneath our armpits. So we're gonna get into like a child's pose, we're gonna draw your hips back, reach those arms forward as far as you can, and think about anchoring your hands so they're not gonna move, and I'm just gonna shift my hips back as far as they can, creating traction all the way through my back and spine. Good exhale. Now I'm gonna walk the hands about 45 degrees to my left and really focus on that inside hand. So my right hand is gonna drive down through the floor. I'm gonna feel my lat and my back really engage as I stretch. Relax, get more range. And now walk all the way across to the left side, 45 degrees, focusing on my inside hand, that left side. Push down to the floor as hard as I can. Relax and breathe. So this is an awesome way to just warm up the body, get a good stretch before you start getting into your workouts.